Welcome to day 10, our 10th story, and I have another one of Uncle Arthur's bedtime stories for you. I just, oh, I used to love these stories so much. Reading with my kids, I remember sometimes they would get a favorite and we would read it over and over, night after night. So they have good, good memories with good stories. And this one is called Reggie's Idea. These are hard times, said Mother, and I'm afraid there will be no money for Christmas presents this year. Oh, you've said that every year, said Bessie. But I mean it this time, said Mother. We simply can't afford it. I'm sorry, but that really is the truth. The children looked very gloomy. Reggie and Bessie went out into the backyard to talk it over. I don't mind so much, said Reggie, although I was looking forward to getting some new tires for my bicycle. What I don't like is that little May and Flo will be disappointed. They count on getting something so much. They will cry their poor little eyes out. Whatever happens, said Bessie, we must see that they get something. I don't mind if I don't get those new books I wanted, so long as those darlings get something to please them. Both Reggie and Bessie loved their baby sisters very much indeed, and always did everything they could to make them happy. So you can guess that they could not bear the thought of their waking up Christmas morning to find their stockings empty. Suppose there isn't any money to spend, said Reggie bravely. That doesn't stop our making something for them. I've got a bright idea. What is it? Do tell me, said Bessie. I'll tell you, said Reggie. <laughs> Let's make them a fine dollhouse. They will just scream with joy at it. Uh-oh. Uh oh, kitty. <laughs> You're going to have to get down, little miss. Uh, they will just scream with joy for it. I can make the house and put in the doors and windows, and you can make the curtains and stick the paper on the walls. What a great idea, said Bessie. That won't cost us a penny. Let's begin right away. Come on then, said Reggie, leading the way to the storage shed. Ah, here's a nice box, he said. Look, the sides are all nice and smooth, and it's just the right shape. All I have to do is build a roof, put a door on, and divide the inside into rooms. How lovely, said Bessie. I almost wish you were going to make it for me. Won't they both be so happy? So Reggie began to work at once. He had learned a little about using tools at school, so he knew just what to do. And here is another picture that one and there's that one very soon his wooden box was looking like a house with a nice pointed roof he cut two windows in each side and made a door and four windows in the front of course he made the whole front to open on hinges so that one could get at all the rooms easily then he painted the sides red and lined them with pencil to make them look like bricks the top he painted gray to look like slates. It took him a few days to finish his part of the job and then Bessie began. In the meantime, she had found some rolls of wallpaper. Uh, she had, yeah, found them up in the attic from which she cut enough to cover the walls of the house. Then she had found some old pieces of cloth that would make fine curtains and other pieces of thick material that did for rich looking rugs and carpets on the floor. By the time her nimble fingers had finished, the inside of the house looked really pretty, but it was bare of furniture. So Reggie got busy again. Out of some empty matchboxes, he made a chest of drawers with, with drawers that really did open and close. A piece of polished tin cut into an oval shape with mother's old scissors did for a mirror. A square piece of wood and four legs soon made a table, and it did not take a great while to make some chairs to match it. Before long, indeed, Reggie had the house furnished from top to bottom, and it really did look nice. When it was all done, they shut the big storage shed door and waited for Christmas morning. It came at last, very early. While the two little girls were still sleeping, Reggie and Bessie brought in the beautiful dollhouse and placed it on the foot of their bed. As they were doing so, one of them accidentally kicked the iron bedpost and up jumped little May. She rubbed her eyes in astonishment and shouted, Oh! That woke little Flo, who promptly sat up in bed and yelled with delight. What a beautiful house, they cried. Is it Bessie's? No, it's for you, both of you, said Bessie. 
Reggie and I made it for you. Why, don't you know? This is Christmas morning, and this is the beautiful surprise that we have been saving for you. Oh, how lovely, cried the little girls together as they jumped out of bed and threw their arms first around Bessie's neck and then around Reggie's. As for Reggie and Bessie, the joy of that moment more than made up for all the trouble they had taken in the making of the house, and in their happiness they quite forgot that Santa Claus had passed them by. They had discovered the truth of that saying of Jesus, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And that is the truth of the matter right there. It truly is more blessed to give than it is to receive. And I hope that you will experience that this Christmas season.